Hello, and welcome to this video. Today, we're going to be exploring an article created by a colleague of mine, Arun. In this article, Arun explains to us how we can effortlessly transform CSV into a REST API with TidyB Cloud Data Services. Let's explore and see how effortlessly this can be achieved. In the introduction of this article, we can see that Arun actually explores some of the reasons why you would consider using data services with TidyB Serverless. In a previous post, Arun actually wrote an article explaining what data services are, what they would be able to provide you, and especially what the benefits of using data services for your environment would be. If you would like to learn more about that, as you can see from the screen, there's a link to his post that is called Embracing Low-Code Development for Backend Apps with TidyB Cloud Data Services. Please explore this if you would like to get some more details about what data services are and what they can do for you. For the purposes of this video, we're going to follow along with this article where we're going to set up our data services and see how much effort it actually takes. So in this article, the first item on our list is to set up a TidyB serverless cluster. Now, in order for us to do this, we have to go to TidyB Cloud. Once we have reached TidyB Cloud, we can log in with an existing account, or we can decide to not log in with an existing account and sign up for a brand new one. After logging into TidyB Cloud, we need to set up a serverless environment so that we can achieve all the items inside of Arun's article. First, we go to clusters. We create a new cluster. We choose serverless. We choose the preferred region in which we want to operate and we provide a cluster name. For this video, we're gonna call it Data Services Demo. Once you've given your cluster a name, you can also choose to have a spending limit. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna keep it completely free and we're gonna set my monthly spending limit to zero. As you can see on the right-hand side, there's a summary of all the choices that I've made and all I need to do is click Create. As my serverless environment is getting spun up, let's go back to the article. Step one said, set up a TidyB serverless cluster. Well, that is happening right now as we proceed through the article. Step two is to import a CSV file. As you can see here, clicking on the spreadsheet will open up a Google doc that has a ton of information that we need. We just need to download this as a CSV file so that we can use it later. Now that we've downloaded the CSV file, we can go back and check to see what the status of our serverless environment is. As you can see now, the connect button in the top right hand corner has lit up. That means that my serverless environment is now available for work. Going back to the article. Now that we've seen that the download works and our serverless environment is up and running, the next step is in your TidyB Cloud console, click on the serverless cluster name, access the cluster overview page, select import. All right, let's try that. So we have everything ready here, right? We can see that the cluster properties are here. We can see that we can connect our core metrics. Everything is available for us. What we're then going to do is in the top right-hand corner, we're gonna click on the ellipsis and in the drop-down menu, we're gonna choose the option import. Once you get to the import page, you can then choose to upload the file that we just downloaded. As you can see, I have the employees data.csv right here. That's the one that we just downloaded. And I'm gonna upload this to our serverless environment. Going back to the article, select import from left navigation menu, upload the previously downloaded CSV file. Well, we didn't go left, we got, went right. Either way, we achieved the same goal. Next in, we can see that in the target section, please specify the database as test and enter employees as the table name. All right. We are then prompted to click on preview. And voila, we have now already been able to confirm that our upload of the CSV file has created multiple columns, has identified multiple data types, and it has also identified the column data. Next up, we need to choose a primary key. Going back to the article, it actually explains that we should choose the EMP ID, so the employee ID as our primary key. So let's do that. Once we have achieved that, we then click on the Start Import option. As you can see, a little menu pops up on your screen that tells you the exact task detail where it is right now. It went from status uploading to status completed. We have now been able to upload all the information in the CSV valve that was provided to us by my colleague Arun. Back in the article, 
Now that we have done the start import and we have now populated multiple records within our database and our table, we can now move on to the next phase. And the next phase is creating a data app. So to create a data app, the article tells us to simply click the data service icon and then click create data app. Well, it's a little bit more than that. If we go back to our cloud environment, we have to actually click on the left menu, click data service. And from here, we can do the next step. So we just have to do one extra step. So it's not a lot of effort, but it does require a little bit more than what the article told us. So now from here, we can actually start creating our data apps. As you can see from the article, we're going to create a data app, not a sample data app. So first, let's go to the create data app section. Now, in this pop-up, we're going to have to give some information. Let's look at the article, what we're advised to do. In the article, we're advised to call the data app employee management. We're advised to link to the data source that we just created. And then we're going to not give any kind of description or connect it to GitHub and move forward. All right. As the article stated, let's give it a name, employee management, and we're going to link it to the data services demo because that is the name we assigned to our serverless environment earlier on. As you can see, we were successfully able to create this data app and we've already got some help pop-ups to help us along in our journey. For the purpose of this video, we're going to ignore that and we're going to refer back to the article to tell us what to do next. The next step is to create endpoints. So, Arun congratulates us on getting this far already because we are very close to having actual working endpoints in our sample app already. As you can see from the step-by-step -step guide, the first thing we need to do is we need to select our data app, click on the plus symbol and click on auto generate endpoint. Inside of this pop-up, we need to make a couple of selections. First of all, we need to select the proper cluster. We need to select the proper database and we need to select the proper table. One more step we need to do according to the article, we need to enable the auto deploy endpoint. Once you have enabled that, we click on generate. As you can see, four endpoints were automatically created for us. We have a get, a post, a put, and a del. Now going back to the article, we can see that after we clicked on the auto generate endpoints, and we filled out all of the information required for us to click on these endpoints. The next step is enable the auto deploy and generate. Now, once we have all of the endpoints that have been created, we can start to explore and manipulate the actual employee data that we uploaded earlier. Next, we want to focus on creating an API key. So before we start actually doing the exploration, the article actually tells us we need to set up an API key for secure authentication. Let's start by creating one. So we want to navigate to the data apps main page by clicking employee management. After selecting employee management, we then want to explore the settings and we then want to look at the create API button listed here. With this pop-up, we are required to provide some information. Let's look at the article, what we're advised to do first. As you can see in the create API key pop-up screen, we want to specify the description right? Add a description for your API key role, set the role to read, write, since you'll perform both actions on the employee table. Once we have entered the API key description and we have changed the role to read and write, we can click on the next button. Now from here, we can see that we have a public key and a private key. There's a warning on screen already. Your data API key only gives you access to the data app. You want to copy your private key and store it in a secure location. After you leave this page, the full private key will be unavailable. So make sure you copy this to a secure location before you move on to the next steps. Now we can see that the authentication has a public key. It has a private key, a description, a create time, a role, and a rate limit. Let's look at the article one more time to see what we're advised to do next. The final piece to this article is to now explore the actual endpoints. With the API key setup, we can now look at the newly created endpoints and we can use two pretty straightforward methods, right? We can use the API docs or we can use Postman. For the purpose of this video, we're going to follow the blog and we're going to be using the API documentation via Swagger UI. If you want to learn more about Postman integration, we have an option for you in this article and we refer you to our documentation, which will walk you through the exact steps that you need to do to set that up successfully. On the data app homepage, we're going to click the view API docs authorize. We can see here, we click on our employee management data app. We stick with settings and we 
have the View API Docs up in the top right-hand corner. By clicking on that button, you will be brought to a new tab or a new window, depending on your settings, where you can actually see the endpoints that we had created earlier. So in the new tab, right, we just learned from the article that we can find the API documentation that has been generated through the Swagger UI that also adheres to the open API specification. When we click on the authorize button located in the top right corner, it will ask us to enter the public key as the username and the private key as the password, both of which were obtained during the API key creation process. After we enter the information, as you can see on screen, we have a couple of basic uh, options available to us. We can use either HTTP or basic for authorization. We have been authorized, and we can enter your public key in the username field and the private key for the password field moving forward. Since we're already authorized, we're just gonna close this and move forward. So back in the article, we see that we have now completed all of the steps required to enable data services on our TidyB Cloud serverless environment. And the conclusion that my colleague Arun gets to is quite poignant when it comes to exploring these kind of options. So I'm going to read exactly what it says and do a little summary for you. So with Tidyb Cloud Data Services, you can easily turn your business data into simple REST endpoints, just like what we did in this post. Converting a CSV into REST API in just a couple of minutes. And remember, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the capabilities of Tidyb Cloud Data Services. As you explore further, you'll uncover a spectrum of features designed to amplify your application development with simple and efficient backend management. So what I got from this article is not just that it is indeed very simple to set up data services for your TidyB serverless environment. It also breeds a lot of new options that previously were not available to you. I would highly recommend everybody following along with this article to explore the links that are provided for you inside of the article referring to either documentation or previous articles that do a deeper dive into what data services are and how they could benefit you. I hope you learned something from this video today and that you enjoyed going through the steps of somebody's article that is trying to explain how to do something where we showcase how easy it truly is to achieve the same results that you're seeing inside the article. You do not have to be a super expert on anything to achieve the same outcome as my colleague. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had a good time and I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.